There are many different types of presentation aids that you can use for your speech, and they're going to fall largely into one of two categories. Either they're going to be technological aids, or they're going to be low-tech aids. And each of these has benefits and drawbacks. If you're using technological aids, it's almost a guarantee that everyone's going to be able to see what you are using, and that they are going to have the message that you intend them to have. In addition, you it's going to look really slick and really professional and really clean because it's just the slideshow that's up on the screen. However, because it's technology, it's probably going to go wrong. Well, not probably. It might go wrong. There's a high chance that something's going to go wonky. Maybe the file gets corrupted, or you send yourself the wrong file, or that file isn't compatible with the computer that you sent it to. Right? There's lots of little things that can just completely make a technological aid not function whatsoever. However, with low-tech aids, right, it's almost guaranteed that it's going to work because there's nothing to plug in, usually. So if you have an object or a poster board, that's going to work no matter what. However, an object or a poster board might be too small for your audience to see. So like I said, benefits and drawbacks of both. More specifically, we can use charts as presentation aids. And you can use this either low-tech or high-tech. Generally speaking, something like this you'll toss up onto a PowerPoint presentation. But a chart can be either a statistical chart, a sequence of steps chart, or a decision tree. So if you're using a statistical chart, this is basically where you are just putting up a table with raw numbers for your audience to see. For example, if you have a breakdown of the racial diversity of your school, and it says that there is X percent of this race and X percent of that race, and it just puts the raw numbers, that would be a statistical chart. If you're using a sequence of steps chart, you are showing your audience that these things need to happen in order for the end goal to occur. So you need to do A, and then you need to do B, and then you need to do C, and it shows them in that sequence. If you're using a decision tree, this is where it has one action that you can take and you answer yes or no and you just kind of follow it all the way down until you get to the ultimate answer. So lots of different charts that we can use as presentation aids. We could also use a graph as a presentation aid and these include things like line graphs, bar graphs, and pie graphs. If we're using a line graph, generally speaking we're showing how a statistic has changed over time. For example, we could be talking about the unemployment rate, and we could show just how drastically the unemployment rate has fallen since the recession in, in 2008, right? It was at a high of 10% back in 2008, and now it's closer to like 4.6 or somewhere in that range. And you could show just how it dropped over the course of that time. With a bar graph, you're showing quantities in categories. So you might be showing the statistics at a local animal shelter and how many cats they have versus how many dogs they have. And the dog's chart is much longer than the cat's chart, right? And they have an even smaller number of bunnies and that sort of thing. So you're comparing different groups of things by how many they, there are of those things. And finally, a pie graph demonstrates the proportion of something. So using the same uh, animal shelter one, right, you might say that they have 100% of all of their pets, and maybe 60% are dogs, and 30% are cats, and then the remaining percentage is bunny rabbits. And you kind of have just have this circle that looks like a pie, and it's divided into those percentage segments, and it shows how much of this versus that we have. If we're using a representation, we're using a diagram or a map of some sort in order to help our audience understand something. For example, if you're giving a speech about the human brain, it would be fairly difficult to show them, to show your audience rather, where the frontal lobe is versus where the amygdala is and all these different like parts of the brain, unless you had some kind of diagram or physical visual aid where you can point to things. So a diagram is a labeled picture that's going to point out the specific things that you're talking about in your speech. If you're using a map, it might be to show where a specific country is on the map so that they understand the context surrounding it. 
For example, if you're giving a speech about Syria and the civil war that's happening in Syria, you might show where Syria is on the map so they can understand the countries that surround it, the area that it's in, and that sort of thing. You could also potentially use a photograph or a drawing as a visual aid. And these, along with graphs, are probably going to be the most frequently used visual aids that you all will use in this class. And sometimes just using a photograph or a drawing is the best way to show something to your audience, to show them the details that you're talking about, and to save you a lot of time when it comes to the actual speech and the words that you're saying. For example, the example that I used of climate change earlier with the side-by-side -side pictures of the ice sheet and the no ice sheet. That was a really drastic example of a photograph. Another example of a photograph is if I was trying to get you to donate money to the aforementioned animal shelter, I might show you pictures of all of the sad puppies who are like huddling in the backs of their cages and they look so sick and they're so starving and all of those things, right? Really make you sad for these puppies and these kitties. And showing the pictures is going to do wonders compared to simply describing them like I just did. In addition, you can use objects or models as visual aids. And these are actual 3D things that you can touch to help your audience understand something. For example, I once had a student who gave an informative speech on how to solve a Rubik's Cube, and he actually brought in a Rubik's Cube and was showing us how to solve it using the Rubik's Cube that he brought in. And he sat there and he solved the Rubik's Cube as he gave his speech. It's pretty impressive. In addition, you could use models. So if you are talking about something that's too big to bring into the classroom, if you're talking about a car engine or how an airplane works or something like that, those things aren't going to fit through the door. So you would likely have to bring in a smaller version, a model, to demonstrate how the wing flaps go up and stuff like that. Finally, you can use people and or animals, with a little asterisk there, um, as your visual aid. So first, people. You can absolutely use people as a visual aid. You can use yourself as a visual aid. You can use someone else as a visual aid. For example, if you are giving a speech on how to do karate, you could demonstrate a few moves with your own body. If you are doing a speech on how to salsa dance, you might ask a friend to come in and help you out. What I don't suggest that you do is ask someone in the class to help you out without having talked to them about it first. You don't want to catch anyone off guard. Finally, animals as visual aids. I want to caution you against using animals as visual aids because believe it or not, I've seen it done and it did not go very well. The only exception would be if it was a highly trained animal like a seeing eye dog or, a, or some other kind of service dog who has a specific task that you want to show to the class. That would probably be the only example where an animal would be an appropriate use of visual aid. I once had a student who was giving a speech on snake hair, and bless her heart, she brought a snake to class. Um, half of the class was really enthused about this, and the other class was ter or the other half was terrified, and I was part of the terrified group. And it just it didn't go very well. The animal was unpredictable. It was doing things that she wasn't expecting. It was distracting her from her speech. It was distracting her audience from her speech, and it just it wasn't a very good outcome for her. She didn't get eaten or bitten or anything like that, but the speech just didn't go the way that she wanted it to go because she was using this unpredictable animal as a visual aid. So I would say only really highly trained animals are going to be appropriate visual aids, not to mention the fact that most animals are not allowed on campus anyway. So I have some examples of visual aids here. This one is a bar graph. And as you can see, this bar graph is about wishes that the genie from Aladdin can grant. And as you can see, he can't grant wishes about true love, he can't bring people back from the dead, but he can do just about anything else. So you can see the number of wishes that he can grant that is, falls under the category of anything else. I also have a pie chart here about the animals that are in Prince Ali's menagerie in Aladdin as well. And you can see that a quarter of his animals are, are the 95 white Persian monkeys, that he's got 75 golden camels, 53 peacocks, birds that wobble on key, and all of these other animals and make way for Prince Ali, right? So 
pie charts and graphs and all of these different things can be really helpful in helping your audience to understand what it is that you're talking about in your speech.